Jesus of Nazareth, spiritually given by his spirit through Ellen Arnold of Plowkeepsie, New York, describing his essence, his oneness with God, and his oneness with brethren, his relationship to the word, and his relationship to man. On faith and patience. Faith leads to patience, or without faith, man must be impatient. Faith is a sure leader to patience, because patience is but an exercise of faith to him who has it, and to him who has not who has it not, is an exercise of trust in something future which is analogous to faith, although not perhaps true, spiritual, faith itself, in the progress of a soul to union and harmony in God and with God. Man is often required to be patient. God's time is the true time for the performance of any work, but how often do we find men entering upon a good work in their own time? God is the director of every work he wills to have accomplished, and all else than such must end in confusion to the undertaker and disappointment to its projectors. God chooses sometimes to try his servants' patience very severely, or they sometimes think that the way is plain and the opportunity the best that can occur. But all know, or may know by reflection, that if the work be not of God, it must fail, whereas if it be of God, it shall be not be arrested, but shall fulfill God's object. Faith worketh patience, and patience, charity, or love, says Paul, though he speaks particularly of the trial of faith, but it is the faith that gives the patience, and if the trial of faith does not find it patient, it may well be questioned if it has or had an existence. Faith and patience are inseparably connected, and the latter is the consequent of the former. So the exercise of patience is not only a proof of our trial, but of our maintenance of faith. Be then attentive to your work. Listen to the voice of God within you, calling you to be ready to work, to be willing to surrender all to God and to the work he calls you to do. But when you have made yourself all ready and can say, here I am, O oh Lord, ready to do what thou hast called me to do, and willing to be used in thy will, whenever and wherever thou art pleased to have me act, and willing to wait for thine time to act, even if that time should be far distant, even if that time should not come to me in the body, but should be delayed till my entrance into the second into the second or third sphere of my existence, thus submitting God's will, thus awaiting his time, and be patient, and he will bless you and reward you as a faithful servant who has fought the good fight with the powers of his own free will and submitted to all to God as one who has worked for the great cause of salvation by saving his own soul, which is all a man can do, even with the God's help, but all that is done must be done by God, for that man's own soul, for God only can save souls, be and be the Redeemer of the world. Have faith, then, and let your faith work patience, your patience, charity, and love. Patience is not an end, it is a means, a work of progress. Even when you seem most inactive, cultivate patience. The waiting upon God for his guidance and help, and the everlasting Father of men will reward you openly for your quiet, heart-rendered obedience, and advance you to more active duties, call you to greater sacrifices, greater patience, and the most arduous tax shall seem trifles to him who has God on his side. Now, I guess in the other book it explains these spheres differently, but, uh, so is the second sphere the uh, first heaven, and then the third sphere the third heaven, or is, are the, are these you're admitted into the first heaven, the second heaven, and the third heaven? The uh, is it the chakras, anus, genitals? Oh, I'm, I'm up to the belly now.
So let's be belly people. Or, or whatever what's mean by that. But some things are definitely open to further interpretation according to your will.